Hi, I'm Kevin DeSmet, and I'm a student at Learning Alias. And this is going to be a power video about mesh to NURBS. So, I intend to make a video series on mesh to NURBS in the future, but I just want to get a basic technique about mesh to NURBS down in a quick little power video. So, I have a mesh piece here, and it's basically one chunk of a mesh. And you can see it's got some curvature in, you know, kind of one direction. And, you know, it, it's not totally flat, but it's not terribly complex either. So the first thing that I do when I mesh to um, surface is I tend to go to the curvature evaluation. And a really good, uh, good tool is to slide this scale around. And you can use any type you like. I prefer mean for this because it gives me an averaged view of the curvature across the mesh or surface. So in this case I'm getting the curvature on the mesh and I can see that there's a bit of acceleration at the bottom and for the rest the surface is generally slightly bent. There's a little flat spot here but that's probably more to do with it being an artifact of the mesh than an actual uh, feature that I need to take into my surface. So I know that I'm going to make this pretty much one patch. How do I go about doing this? Well, I use a workflow. It involves no curves. It's basically surfaces and then a, the plane primitive. So I click that. I double click the option box. Make sure it's set to object degree one and then I just click it somewhere in space. And now depending on how big or how large it is, I tend to scale it up or down. I'll scale it up just a little bit. Turn on its CV hull. Then start picking CVs and with Control and Alt snap it to the mesh, the corners of the mesh. Of course in this case because it's just a single piece it's really evident where the corners of the CVs need to go sometimes it's a little bit less obvious. Then I tend to use the curvature evaluation just like I showed you where one patch would stop and where another patch would begin and then I put CVs around that region. So in this case I just snapped it to the corner using control and alt with the move tool. So great you say. Let's shade her up. So now I have I have a kind of a a uh, dark blue color for the mesh and it doesn't really matter what color it is as long as it's different so the surface needs to be a different color and I tend to like yellow for this so my surface is going to be yellow and my mesh is going to be blue and you can see right now that clearly my surface um, being just a simple plane is way too flat and it's not hitting the mesh now what do I do? Well, I pick the surface and I up its degree. You could up it to degree 2 and see how far you can get. I typically go for degree 3 straight away as the minimum of a base patch. And you can see the little CVs shining through. I do tend to go to the window display x-ray controls and make this a little bit higher so the, the visibility shines a little through a little more and now what I want to do is I want to snap the boundary CVs to the mesh first so I just pick CVs and I just move around and I try to look dead on to the surface and just with control alt snap that CV shift middle mouse to select another CV and deselect the one I had selected and you'll see it a lot better with this CV exactly what I'm doing. See, I'm, sna I'm snapping it to the mesh. And the, the boundary CVs on a Bezier or even a NURBS surface are always on the surface. So these CVs will actually be pretty much exactly right. There we go. I just go across the boundary. Now what I do is you could easily pick this CV or this one and you know one at a time for the inner CVs and then snap them to the mesh as well but I tend not to really do that generally when the boundary CVs have been snapped to the mesh then simply using NUV 
will slide the will push the middle CVs in the correct direction. The best fit plane that NUV will use for this is generally pretty good, so I don't bother snapping it to the mesh. So you can see it's starting to pop through. And I want to be really sure when I do this that my tolerance is tight enough so that it gives me the truth. And 001 should be pretty tight. And these boundary CVs need to come through a little bit as well. So I've got to be careful. Okay, so that's getting pushed through. Then this one. And I always use the shift middle mouse to drag a selection box to deselect the CV I had and select another CV. And I just push and pull it up, just like that. And I just work my way around the surface. And again, generally, I will tend to get the boundary CVs uh, looking right first. And then I'll work on inner CVs. Push that up a little bit, up a little bit. And maybe this up a little bit as well. Now these middle CVs maybe need to get tugged down. And basically what I want to see is I want to see the mesh start to Z-fight with my surface. So that when I rotate around, it kind of pops through, and then it doesn't, and then it does again, and then it doesn't, and then it does again. Which gives me a good idea of how close the mesh is to my surface. But generally I do want to see the yellow of my surface and then just the edges, the wire frame edges of my mesh. So you can see if I look at it now, my surface is adhering, let's turn off the CVs, my surface is adhering very, very closely to the mesh indeed. And with a very little effort. I didn't need to create curves and because I started with a 1-1 one -one plane, I am pretty much guaranteed that my curvature distribution is going to be pretty good right off the bat. So let's put some more cuts on there. And let's look at U first. So you can see the curvature distribution in U, it's really clean. To follow the mesh the way that the mesh was, I'm not saying that the fact that it has seemingly more acceleration towards the rear is a good thing or not. Maybe it is and maybe it ain't. But at this point I'm just following the mesh. Okay, let's look at curvature in V. And again, you can see very nice, consistent curvature in V. Again, you could argue about the characteristics of it. But I'm following the mesh, and I'm doing so with a surface that's very clean, very lightweight, and fast. And then, as a final check, what I tend to do is I go to Evaluate and use the Deviation Map. So the Deviation Map asks you for uh, your surface first. So I'll just select that and hit Accept then your mesh, I'll select that and hit accept and then you get a plot that tells you the distance that your mesh is from your surface and let's look at acceptable distance let's make that one and acceptable distance is basically the distance you are from the mesh so generally speaking most mesh to surface tasks will give you a mesh deviation of about one millimeter. That's pretty standard. So if I put acceptable distance on one, and then ramp distance will basically make the colors uh, more or less readable. So if the ramp distance is really high, uh, you know, all of the deviation that's slightly off is basically yellow. If I make the ramp deviation a, so let's go for two, I get really good idea of how much it deviates compared to the one which is what I want. I can also see that because nothing is blue that the surface I have is poking over instead of sagging under the mesh in its deviation. So not only do I see the deviation, I also see in which direction that deviation is. I can close this down, I can just select nothing and I can work on this surface. So if I put the controls back on, let me pick this up, change that around that's made it significantly better. Let's look at this hull again, and maybe I do want to slide that a little bit as well. Wow, that's gotten much better, hasn't it? Let's look at the bottom. 
That still looks good. I'm going to make the mesh a different color because the blue that would indicate that I'm off in the negative direction is a little bit too similar to the purple. So let's make this this color. And I can see that it's looking pretty good. My deviation is really slight. And now I only have a few splotches left. And when you have a few splotches left, you can be pretty confident that you have actually improved on the quality of the model. So this is, this is not a mistake that you couldn't model in because you were out of, out of tolerance. This is pretty, pretty assuredly the smoothness of the surface that is now superior to what the mesh originally was. Because if I take the surface and I move it just a little bit, just momentarily, you can see on this mesh piece I only have a few triangles. You know, I only have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, let's say about ten triangles that define this roundness of the of the patch of the piece. Let's do control Z to move this back. So I'm pretty happy with my deviation right here. So let me hide the mesh and let's see what we've got. So yeah, I like it. It's very clean and consistent. And with the black and white horizontal bars, you can really see the starkness of the surface. Judge whether the highlights are wobbling in the gestalt. We can use the curvature evaluation shader just like we used uh, to determine where it was going to be. And we can actually look at the characteristic and see if we're, if we're getting the characteristic. You can do this with the horizontal vertical bars as well, but I'm going to choose to do it with this. I now have the mesh and I can use the mean shader to see well what would the mesh look like well the mesh would look like this there's redness over here redness over there and it's a little flatter at the top than it is at the bottom as a general overview of the flow so let's go for surfaces and let's see if we're hitting that same thing so you can see compared to the mesh what the difference is so I can see that maybe over there, actually, this is a bit too much. So I can NUV that down a little bit. Pull this up a little bit. And that need not be a whole lot, because remember, maybe I'll lose some deviation. Then we can toggle it back. See, now this is really crisp and clean, I think. And you will see that now, probably I have a little bit of a deviation, which I do. I can measure that. So maybe this, this change I made for the shading, maybe I don't want that. So I can go to locators and use the deviation tool. So you can't really pick a mesh with that. Well, you can always make a CV curve, and I tend to use regular degree 3. Let me turn the surface off and then just control alt snap and just snap this. And you see I've already got a curve and I want to have, I want to have a lot of points so I know that my curve is really on there. Then go back to surfaces and use the deviation. And I can simply click that curve and then click my surface and without letting the mouse button go yet, I can drag. There we go. And you can see that the deviation is about 0.5. So that's actually still uh, well within our spec of one millimeter. So maybe this was a change for the better. Of course, you would have to see the whole car to judge whether this end condition. So what do I mean by end condition? Well, the curvature characteristic near the boundaries of a patch together determine your model. So then you do have to remember to get rid of this little temp curve. So this is generally how I go about doing a Mesh to NURBS project. I do use rails and uh, squares and freeform blends. I do use curves to build from as well. But for a lot of the bulk of the work, I find this primitive plane method to be a very good method for Mesh to NURBS work.
I have been Kevin Smet, a student at Learning Alias.